Iman rises and falls. Rises and falls. The thing we need to try to fix though, is that it doesn't fall to the point to where we fall into sin. It's like a muscle. We have to learn that Iman is a muscle. If I go to the gym, would I pick up the, the 50 pound weight first? And just start chucking that thing over my head? If I'd never worked out before? No man, I'm gonna rip every muscle in my body. That's it, I'm, that's gonna be the last workout I'll probably do for at least a month. I'm gonna tear every ligament and tendon if I can even get the things above my head. And then I'm not gonna work out anymore, I'm gonna say that's too much. Right? Correct? No, you start with the little weights, correct? And then when those get easier, now you go to the other one. Because what happens is you build something called muscle memory. I'm a martial artist by profession, so I used to run martial arts schools, and this is something I know. You, but you develop muscle memory, so that the muscles remember these movements and they get stronger. But if you stop working on those muscles, what happens? They go straight back downhill. Iman is a muscle that must be worked on. But if you want to work on your Iman, you can't start by saying, okay, I'm going to fix my Iman by reading one juz a day. I'm going to pray uh, uh, 20 ra'ka of, 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 of Qiyam al-Layl. You know, I'm going to read 50 ahadith, this, that, and the third. Because why? You're not going to be able to keep up that regimen. I'm going to fast every other day, the fast of Dawood. You're going to put it all in at once. You're going to go from being a marginal Muslim to a super Muslim in one day. It doesn't work like that. You're going to jump off the building thinking you're Superman, you're going to splat right on the ground. You need to work at it slowly. Maybe you're going to say today, I'm going to start praying the Turaka before Fajr every day. Because this is part of the Sunnah Mu'akkadah, something the Prophet ﷺ never left even when he was traveling. So I'm going to pray Turaka before Fajr every day. And that's the only thing you're going to do for a week. Leave it. Once that becomes easy and now it becomes part of your regiment, then add something. And once that becomes easy and it becomes like almost you can't live without it, then add something else. Slowly add the weight on as you get, and you will find your iman continue to increase. You'll find it continuing to increase. Because iman is a muscle. Little by little by little. People ask me, how do I increase my iman? You work little by little. And, and Allah Azawajal loves this. This is why He increases the iman. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah loves a good deed that is done continuously more than He loves a large, huge, great deed that you do it once and you leave it. Maybe I'm going to give sadaqah, I'm going to start giving sadaqah by giving one pound a day. That's it. I'm going to give one pound a day or one pound a week and I'm going to put that in a jar and I'm going to save it to the end of the month and I'm going to donate that for a good cause. That's it. After that you will find yourself disgusted with that one pound. You'll think that's nowhere near enough and you'll start putting two and then you'll put three and then you'll start realizing the more you put, the more you get and the more you can give. It starts becoming a process that you can't win. You can't win. It's like if someone, let's say you had two hands and you took a dinar uh, excuse me, you took a pound out of a jar and gave it to someone and someone put two in your hand. You're going to eventually end up with more in this hand than you will in this hand. And you're going to start having to give more. You're going to say, okay, let me take three or four or five, six. And they just keep pouring and pouring and pouring. This is Sadaq al-Jariyah for Allah Azza wa Jal. It just keeps coming, it keeps coming, it keeps coming. And you'll find that you cannot outgive Allah. You can't, I dare you, try it. If any one of you thinks you can outgive Allah, try it for a month, and if you end up poor and broke and homeless in the streets, call me and I'll give you a house. It's not gonna happen. Not if you do it sincerely for Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet Sallallahu said, I will take an oath upon three things in this life. The first of them, مَا مَعْلُمْ مِنْ صَدَقَةً You cannot decrease your wealth by giving for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. You can only increase it. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Every deed has energy and strength. And then the strength and energy is followed by a period of slackening. So he who's slacking is other than in accordance with my sunnah, he'll be doomed. Meaning that every deed it has strength where you feel like you can do everything. The ulama say when you feel your iman high like that, take advantage and do good deeds. Then when you feel the iman slow down, stick yourself to the fara'id, the, 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 the regulations. Because then you will find the energy come again to you. Because you can't always be the superhero for the deen. You can't always be the super Muslim every single day. There's going to be days where you're not feeling it anymore. We all had those days. Stick yourself to the fara'id and you will find that you are on the straight path. Allah will increase, increase and increase you. But when you find your slacking causes you to fall into the sin and be derelict of Allah's duties, you should be worried. You should be worried because you're going to fall into doom. Because you never know that slacking might be something that Allah caused you to die in. You might die in that period of slacking and you die upon that. So be careful insha'Allah ta'ala.